Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura, and today I'm going to do a library haul. Um, so this is actually me uh, borrowing books from the public library. I have said in previous videos that I am a big fan and advocate of the public library, and I use it quite a lot. Um, but you don't see that very much because I talk about manga on this channel primarily, and I buy manga primarily. Um, uh, it is sort of the one thing outside of classic novels that I allow myself to buy without borrowing from the library first. Everything else I read, I borrow from the library first, and I actually use the library constantly. It's basically a swinging door. I'm always going to pick books up, and I'm always going to drop them off, and it's I always have a refresh of whatever library books I currently have checked out. So um, anyway, I just thought that I would share them with you and maybe uh, talk about some of them. Um, I can't talk about all of the books because uh, something that I do like to do is I actually place holds on every single new release that the library purchases. So I go through the catalog and I search for new releases and I place holds on every single one and then I take them home and look at them. Um, so I don't know what they are before I place holds, and I don't necessarily read them all because I am, uh, because I don't know anything about them, and I don't know enough about uh, graphic novels of other cultures besides Japan, and I just don't know enough of it to be able to judge just from looking at it online. Um, so I want to have that thing in hand. I want to look at it. I want to, um, you know, read a little bit of it, and uh, normally. You know, I probably only read like maybe a quarter of the books that I actually check out, so... Um, but I still really like checking them out, I really like seeing them all, and I really like getting them when they're still new, so... Um, that's also just something that I like. Anyway, I thought I would share them with you. Um, I might be doing this a couple of times, especially here at the beginning of the year, because I'm going to have very small purchase hauls over the next couple of months, um, just... Uh, to help my budget out a little bit, and so I'm going to do this instead for a little bit. Um, and anyway, I just wanted to highlight some of the other things that I'm reading uh, too on this channel, and I thought this was a good way to do that. So uh, let me show you the things that I currently have checked out of the library. The first thing I have checked out is Hokusai's Lost Manga. Um, it really is um, primarily a facsimile of uh, Hokusai's uh, drawings. Um, from something that is thought to have been part of a continuation of some series that he had published. Uh, this comes out of the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. Um, and it doesn't have, like there's there's a little bit here at the beginning that sort of describes what this uh, book is. Uh, mostly it is just a facsimile of uh, pages from their particular collection. So um, I'm really interested in it. Um, certainly uh, early representation of uh, where manga has come from um, is seen in Hokusai's art, so he's definitely worth checking out. There are some other books that might be a little bit more interesting, um, at least as far as Hokusai's involvement in the creation of manga, but um, this looked like a really nice publication. I'm really interested in reading this. Uh, the next title that I picked up is a new release. I don't really know anything about it, but this is uh, Miss Hadra or Miss Shadra. I'm not entirely sure how this is pronounced. Ayas Min Omar Atta. Um, this is uh, apparently an autobiography of the author's experience um, with epilepsy, and um, there are a number of uh, resources here at the end of the book. Uh, Epilepsy Foundation, as well as the National Suicide Prevention uh, Crisis Text Line and LGBT National Help Center and Muslim Youth Helpline. So you can kind of uh, get an idea of what kind of things are discussed in this uh, particular book. Um, I'm kind of curious about it just because of uh, the style. It does look like it's very heavily influenced by manga, um, and the colors in it are quite interesting. So oh, that's not a very nice picture. Let's see. Yeah, so yeah, the colors are, are really quite interesting. They change quite a lot. Um, and there's a little bit of a psychedelic look to some of the pages, I think, probably, as this person is experiencing uh, epileptic uh, episodes. Um, but there is definitely a heavy influence from 
uh, manga in this, so I just thought that I would uh, read it. And I think this is the last thing that I have to read before I return it. Um, I think it's, this one actually might be overdue, so I better read it probably today, so I can return it later today. Um, but yeah, interesting looking title. I ended up taking out a number of titles by Jason, who's a Norwegian artist, and I think lives in France, but uh, there isn't really very much uh, information about Jason. Um, and he is so hard to search because his name is so generically Jason. Um, I think he has another name, but I can't remember it right now. Um, so anyway, this is Low Moon, um, and I also picked up Left Bank Gang, uh, The Living of the Dead, and The Werewolves of Montpellier. Um, and I think at the end of this one it says that Jason lives in France, so and this one takes place in France, so I think maybe that's where my connection is. Um, I really like his stories. His art style is very simple um, and angular, and there's just something about it. This There's just something about his stories, and I can't really even explain what the quality is, but I just enjoy reading Jason's work so much. This one is particularly great because there's a whole... Um, episode, I have read this one um, just the other day, but there was a whole episode in it where uh, the characters are drunk and so um, Jason has actually illustrated the panels um, kind of topsy-turvy so as you you have to actually like turn the book upside down in order to be able to read the different panels because um, they're drunk and so they're stumbling around and, and that's sort of them being disoriented so you have to be disoriented. That was fantastic really really like his work and uh, looking forward to uh, reading the rest. Um, I have read a couple of other titles of course um, but I'm really really enjoying reading Jason. I also uh, picked this up because um, I think one of the challenges for my 52 manga reading challenges was to actually read something from an author from another country so not necessarily manga so uh, this is what I picked. And then this title I actually have read before. This is Red Colored Elegy by Seiichi Hayashi. Um, and I do have another title in actually my collection that's by Seiichi Hayashi. But I wanted to read this one first again. Um, I read this when I was a pretty early new manga reader and it just was way over my head and it, I didn't enjoy it. And I know now that um, this is the type of story that I'm starting to really like. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I read this again. Um, this is quite out of print. But there is apparently a reprint coming out sometime. Um, it has been on Amazon saying a reprint is coming soon for a couple of years now. So hopefully that's not a glitch on Amazon because I really want to own a copy of this as well. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading this again. I also picked up Volume 1 of Royal City by Jeff Lemire. Um, I have read a few titles now by Jeff Lemire. He's a Canadian artist. Um, I really enjoy his story writing. Um, I really like the way that he writes his stories, but I am starting to fall out of love or interest in his art style. I just don't feel like it's um, dynamic or changes enough uh, to suit my interest in uh, these books. Um, so I'm I'm kind of on the fence now about him. Like I really liked him at the beginning because it was new and fresh and different, but now I'm getting kind of tired of the same old, same old, and especially when the characters just don't look any different from each other. They're identical characters from his previous books. Like, it's all just interchangeable, so I don't particularly like that. Um, anyway, so I'm going to check this one out. Uh, the next title I checked out is Lewis Undercover by Fanny Britt and Isabel Arsenault. This um, is the same author as um, Jane the Fox and Me, I think. I was seeing it quite a lot on BookTube last year, and I had meant to pick it up and I just didn't get around to it and now this new title has come out so I thought I'll read this one first. The art in it is really cute. Um, it's just really pretty and muted. Um, there are some instances of color. Uh, I don't actually know what this is about at all. Uh, there's some children in it. There's some parents in it. Oh, I think there's a, definitely a girl in it. Um, so, uh, who knows, I really don't know what this is about, um, but I'm really interested in reading it. It just looks really, really pretty. It's also a really large uh, book, so I'll probably get to this pretty soon. Um, another big book that I really just picked up for the illustration, but it's also a new edition or a new uh, title, is Tenements, Towers, and Trash, An Unconventional Illustrated History of New York City by Julia Wirtz. 
Um, this is really black and white illustrations of cityscape and architecture and uh, different aspects of the history of New York City. Um, it is mostly illustration, although there is some text here and there. Um, but it just looks uh, really interesting, really nice to look at. I'm really interested in looking at all of the different facades. Um, and there's there was bits where it was like comparing different styles in architecture. Oh, here's one that's uh, comparing different signs. Um, so I think this will be a really interesting read and uh, looking forward to getting into it. I've also picked up the Autumn Lands Tooth and Claw Volume 1 by Kurt Busiek and Benjamin Dewey. I have read another title that was illustrated by Benjamin Dewey, which is I Was, I was the Cat. Um, and I really enjoyed that title. I don't actually remember the illustration all that much, but um, flipping through this one, since there's a lot of warring going on, uh, flipping through this one, it actually just, to me, has a Jim Henson quality to the illustration. Um, it is a little bit... Uh, dark. There's quite a lot of anthropomorphic animals. Um, it is obviously a time of uh, kind of a medieval warring states. I'm not entirely sure what this is about at all, but uh, it looks really pretty and uh, looking forward to checking it out. Now on to the books that I have read. Um, so the first one is Black Magic by Greg Rucka and Nicholas Scott. This is The Awakening Volume 1. This is essentially the story about uh, which I think, um, who is a police officer or a detective. Um, at the very beginning, she is called to a hostage negotiation situation where she is exchanged for the hostages, and at that moment she discovers that she is now being targeted by something, something from the past, and you don't really know what that thing is. You're only just starting to get a clue as to who she is, what she's a part of, um, what this possible thing might be, how dangerous this thing might be. It's just a very, like, a quick introduction. The illustration in it is really uh, quite uh, detailed. Uh, it's mostly in these kind of, like, muted um, charcoal colors, but every once in a while. Um, but every once in a while there is instances of color, and it's usually when uh, magic is being applied, so uh, really kind of a nice use of color, otherwise it uh, tends to be quite uh, a flat palette. Um, but the illustration is really nice, it's really highly um, articulated characters and it looks uh, really quite uh, realistic, I think. Uh, really, there's a nice, a nice level of realism in this art. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely... It was a good read. I really enjoyed reading it. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to keep going with it because this isn't really a topic that I'm particularly interested in, but um, an interesting introduction anyway, and uh, I was glad I read it. I also read Real Friends by Shannon Hale and Lily Young Pham. Uh, Shannon Hale is a fairly popular, well-known uh, novelist. She writes primarily uh, YA fantasy. I think she dips uh, I think she also writes um, juvenile fantasy and also um, adult sort of like contemporary romance type stories. I have read, um, I think I've read all of her young adult titles and I'm pretty sure I've read all of her adult titles and I really enjoy her. I think she's one of my favorite like modern writers. I just really like the way that she makes the story go and I really like the fantasy that she creates in her stories. This is nonfiction. This is an autobiography of her experience. Um, in middle school and experience sort of uh, trying to navigate friendship and how difficult it was and how she tries to be friends with people who don't necessarily want to be friends with her and kind of just like the social complications of being part of a group um, and and how that uh, complicates your life. Um, there's also a lot of uh, family tension and stuff in this particular story. thought it was really good. I really would recommend it. Um, I think it's handled well. It does definitely feels true, and um, I really enjoyed it, and I certainly think that um, most kids would enjoy it, although there is um, real tension between the uh, between Shannon and her older sister, and I think um, some people might have an issue with how extreme that tension is, but I actually felt it really true to my own childhood and sibling relationships, so it also just felt true. So 
um, yeah, really, really enjoyed this, and it was really uh, illustrated um, really nicely. Uh, just really, really cute. I say really a lot. Um, yeah, I recommend this. Um, the next title that I picked up was How to Survive in the North by Luke Healy. Um, this has uh, a really structured panel layout. Um, as you can see here, it's just very uh, angular, very kind of blocky, which isn't necessarily a layout um, that I find uh, conducive to like really exciting stories. Um, it's not something that I'm normally interested in reading, but I really liked the color palette, and the subject is really quite interesting. It sort of follows two stories. Um, one, the history of um, a an explorer, I guess, of sorts, who had it in his mind that um, the Arctic, or the, the North Pole, um, he had it in his mind that the North Pole is actually not as unforgiving as you would think as long as you knew the tricks of the trade, as long as you knew how to survive. And so he is going on an expedition with a number of, of people um, of various ilk, um, of various backgrounds, um, and going on an expedition to the North Pole and then sort of the trouble that they get into. Um, and it uh, it was really interesting. It is mixed in with the story of a college professor, modern day college professor, who um, has gotten into trouble with the board of administration because he's having an affair with uh, a student at his school. And um, while he's sort of cleaning up his office because he has to take a sabbatical, he discovers the name of this particular explorer. And so while he's on sabbatical, he's actually researching this explorer. And through his research, he's able to kind of define um, what it is he's actually been doing with this student and um, how he needs to kind of face his current situation. So um, I actually thought it was a really good story and a really good um, end to a story, but it was also really interesting to read about and just harrowing the situation that especially the uh, explorers who are kind of trapped in the north get themselves into. So I thought it was really good and I definitely would recommend checking this one out. Uh, next I read a manga. This is Flying Witch Volume 1 by Chihiro Ishizuka. Ishizuka. Um, this is published by Vertical, so it's a little bit of a smaller print, um, and it is a small size manga. Um, I was okay with this. I'm actually still kind of on the fence about this title. I really like the story, and I really like the characters. There isn't much of a story. It is um, a slice of life um, situation. Basically, it's about this girl on the cover who is a witch. She's turned 15, and so now she is on her own. Uh, she can leave home and start her training to become a full, full-grown full witch. Um, she's just a novice witch in training. Um, it's really similar to the situation that you get in Kiki's Delivery Service. So she has to leave her family and set up somewhere and... Uh, undergo her training and uh, become a full witch. So this is her um, leaving home and she ends up going to a distant cousin's house um, and starts living with them, at least in this first volume. It's very sweet. I love the relationships in this. I love the character of, of all of the people in this. Um, I really liked um, her na naivety in uh, interacting with people, and I love their interactions with her um, upon discovering that she is a witch. It's it's really just like sweet and warm and heartwarming. I like that a lot. I really hate the art in this so much. Um, it is so off-putting to me. I just really dislike the... Uh, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see the quality of it. It... The illustration itself is actually fine, it's just that it is so um, heavily influenced and heavily drawn from uh, a computer. Like, you just don't feel the artist's hand in this work. You don't see their hand. You don't see how they've moved their hand to create a line. It's all erased. Their personality is erased by using a computer. The the screen tones are all applied through a computer and um, you know it's it's so samey and it's so flat and it's so lifeless um, but the drawing itself like it's fine like the characters look nice um, but I just I hate this type of illustration so much I will never fully get a hundred percent behind fully a hundred percent 
uh, computer illustrated uh, manga just does not work for me and I I think we lose so much in the process because of it and so it I rate it lower because of that and then there was a translation decision in this um, because there's a joke about their uncle having a very thick accent he has to be written with a very thick accent um, but the translation decision was to give him a uh, very uh, cartoonish or very recognizable cartoon accent of Foghorn Leghorn. Now I know people have that southern accent but this particular character does not match that accent. It's too reminiscent of a particular cartoon character already for me to believe that this character here has this accent. He is sort of living on a farm but he doesn't have the trademark characteristics that would go with a very a thick and recognizable American accent. It just, it doesn't fit, uh, this type of accent doesn't fit with how quiet and sweet and gentle and warm this story is. It just doesn't fit with the art style of, of uh, static flatness. It just doesn't fit and it really, really pulled me out of the story. So as much as I really love the story and I think a lot of people will really, really like this manga and I would recommend it, I only rated it two stars because I didn't like the translation and I really didn't like the art. Um, so yeah, I don't know, like I probably will read more of it, but I don't think I'll be collecting it. The next title I haven't finished reading, I am currently in the middle of, that's Black Hammer Secret Origins Volume 1 by Jeff Lemire, Dean Ormston, and Dave Stewart. So I'm just about halfway through reading this one. I'm actually really enjoying this. I think this one's really fun. Um, it is about a group of superheroes and they were in the middle of defending the Earth and something has happened um, um, in you know, the success of defending the Earth from this great, terrible, evil thing. Um, they have been locked in another world or another dimension or just in this place which happens to be like a very kind of Hicksville tar uh, farm town and so they're trapped there, they've been trapped there for 10 years. Some of them are still able to use their magic, some of them aren't uh, like this little girl here on the cover. Um, it is really, it's really good. It's about sort of like the struggle of like why are we here, how do we get out, what is happening um, and you know some of them want to age, some of them want to just like leave and they're struggling with their relationships because they're cooped up in this place and they're you know like they lost a friend in the process of this and it's just like they still are are all so broken because they're trapped in this place and they've been trapped there for so long. Um, this has satisfied my issues that I had with I Hate Fairyland. There's that story I Hate Fairyland that's really popular that I read that I really disliked. Um, this one um, also has a girl who is basically an old woman in a girl's body um, and the more human approach and reaction to that experience and um, I think this is really good and even though I've only read half of it I would recommend it. I think it's really worth your time checking out. Um, and then the last thing that I read is sort of a finally. Uh, this is Saga Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. Um, yes, it has taken me this long to finally pick up Volume 1. I don't know that I'll be picking up Volume 2, but I really did enjoy this. It's just that I'm not intrigued enough to keep going with the story. It was good. I was compelled to read uh, through towards the end. I really enjoyed the characters. I really enjoyed the story, but I'm just, I don't really care. It is a Romeo and Juliet type story, and if you must know about my least feelings on Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet is my least favorite of all of Shakespeare's plays, so um, I'm not interested in reading a retelling of Romeo and Sh Sh uh, Juliet, Romeo and Shakespeare. Uh, I'm not interested in that either. Or maybe I'm interested in that a little bit more than Romeo and Juliet. I must say, that sounds more interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, just just not really something that I'm particularly interested in, but you know, I can see the hype and I think it's it's warranted. It definitely is a good series, um, good title, uh, good art. Um, enjoyed it. It was good. I don't really have anything else to say about it because I think everything's been said already. It's so popular. Anyway, that's it for my library haul. Uh, that's pretty much everything I have checked out, although there's actually quite a bit more checked out. It's just not relevant to this channel, so I didn't feel like talking about it, and that was enough books to talk about in the video. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I'm really curious 
if you read manga, do you also read other types of comic books and graphic novels? I'd be really interested to know that because I primarily read manga, um, but I do also really like other uh, cultures of comic books and graphic novels. I just don't know about them as much, um, but I really do like to read them. And I certainly started out of uh, comic books. I did read a lot of comic books when I was a kid, um, and I collected comic books, mostly Archie. I don't know if people would call that comic books. It's mostly, uh, well, there were some single issues in there. Um, so, you know, like, my, my reading has always been comic books, or like pictures and words. I've always been pictures and words, so... Um, I'm just really curious if anybody else is sort of reads everything or if you really stick to one particular culture of comics. Um, um, anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.